Hey, this is Kevin, Once Upon a Game, and I created this uh, uh, counter variant for Sid Saxon's uh, Solitaire Bowling, or Bowling Solitaire, which is actually an incredibly great game. Um, I guess he produced the rules in 1969, uh, and it's always been played with cards. You know, there's regular old cards, and uh, as you can see from the size, they can take up quite a bit of space uh, and requires a lot of shuffling between each frame. So uh, I decided to take a little differently and uh, go with counters. Um, you get 20 counters, they're double sided. So you got pens and balls, and they represent the same cards that you would have in the game. Uh, now normally you have draw stacks um, of five cards, three cards, and two cards, and to facilitate that, uh, I've got these ball return counters, I call that the ball return, and you would put that on there, and then uh, you would trade it later for a ball. We need a new one, so when you start out the game, it would be like that, and you use this one, and you could trade that for another one. But what I found is actually easier to do is to not even use these, uh, because these tell you how many you have, and I found it's just much simpler that when you use a ball, you put it beneath the column that it's in, and then you can, um, uh, as, long as, as long as the number under here is not equal to that number, you can replace that one when you use it. So it moves along a lot quicker. So what I thought I'd do is try to uh, just play a quick frame. Uh, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just go ahead and do a quick frame anyway and show you how it works. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to take all the counters, balls and pens, it's all the same, all 20 counters, and put them into a draw cup. You know, our style makes really nice makeup bags that are probably big enough to hold the board that you would have to print. This is just mounted on foam core. Uh, and I did put a little bit of glossy Mod Podge on it to make it a nice surface. Um, so you can do that if you want. Uh, um, you might want to make a nice art scout bag to make it a little more portable. Sorry for all the dust here on my felt top. So, and then what you do is you just randomly place your two pins out. So, without looking, you just paste them inside up. And then place the first three balls. Go to one. Sorry, I'm having to hold the camera. Maybe all steady cam or something. Anyway, all right. So we're started. We have a you know, one, nine, and eight. Uh, and the rules are pretty simple. You cannot take this ball out by itself, and you cannot remove any of these on the first first go, first turn of the round, um, or first turn of the frame, I should say. Uh, but then you you can remove up to three counters that add up to a number ending, and in this case, a one, a nine, or an eight. So um, I could take the seven, the two, and the two, take them out, that would be 11, so I could use the one ball. And also, the, the, the strategy is because you know in this column, you use this one, you're only going to get one more counter to draw. Which, when that column runs out, you're left to two choices, so it makes it a little tougher. So my strategy is to always try to use this ball as soon as possible, and because these, these will replicate a lot quicker. So, um, I tend to not try to overthink this. Just just go with it the best I can, um, and see what the different options are. Um, I could do two two zero. That's a four. I can't do that. I could do you can do you can do a weird pickup this way. Five two seven. That's also a four. Can't do that. Two five. That's a zero. Don't have anything for that. One thing to look out for though is you got the zeros. Both zeros are on the board. Both twos are on the board. So you can never take out. You have to take these out in a combo because I'm never going to get a two down here because both twos are already out on the board. So there's definitely a lot of strategy in such a simple simple mechanic. Uh, it's really cool. So we'll just go with my first guy here and I'll take 7-4, seven, 7-2-2, seven, two, two, take the fours off. And then what I like to do is I like to set them off to the side, my big hands there, and then you can see once you've played, I'm going to take the one off, put it down here, and then draw the next one. The good thing about having both zeros out is that uh, they have nothing. So in the card game it's ten, but uh, here it's zero because it's essentially what you're, you're what you're doing. But 
they had nothing. So if, if I can take the six out, then I can take the zeros out for free or you know, any kind of combination. So I have to put that backwards. And it doesn't matter which way you place these, it's just kind of more thematic. They have the ball and the pins. So, like right now, we have a five, three, and zero I can take out. That's my eight. Uh, I could take out the nine, zero, and zero and get both of those, uh, get all three of those out immediately, but then I got that four abandoned, which is okay because there's there's no fours been in play yet. So I know a four could come up if I can cycle through enough through enough balls. It seems kind of risky to me to leave a pin out there uh, in a split that early. Uh, you can only take three, so I couldn't do like the five, the three, the six, and then grab the zeros as well. But I do have the nine, the zero, the zero, which I just said, but that would leave the four. But if I do this five, three, this, that's a four. So uh, I think I will do... I think I'm going to go do the eight, the five, three, zero. And so all these are counting as your first ball in bowling where you have two balls. This is all technically, even though these are ball counters, these are counting as your first ball uh, for the purposes of uh, scoring. So I'm gonna put these out here. Don't you keep track of what's already been played. Um, and I'll take the eight off. I'm gonna take this one off because I'm recycling the counters. And, oh, no, nope, got seven, that was four. Okay, so now we're going to be in bad shape, I think. Let's see. So I could do, again, let's see, I always want to put it on the pin side. Um, so when you get to a point where you cannot take any any counters off, that any combinations that would add up to one of these numbers, uh, then you discard all three of these, bring them down here, and, and replace them, and now you're on your second ball. So if I did that right now, my first ball would have been six, and now I can try to pick up a spare by knocking out the other four. So, and there is some strategy to it, especially when you see that the only combination you have is going to leave, um, like for some reason, if I could take out everything but the zero on this ball, I might not want to do that because I know that I'm not going to get another zero because this other zero has already been played. So you got to think it through and kind of go, oh, what am I going to do? And uh, Normally the frame doesn't take this long since I'm just kind of explaining it. But uh, anyway, so I have a choice of, I got six, zero, and nine, which is a 15. Got nine and four and zero, which is a 13. And actually, I really have no choices here, do I? I can take the nine out, but that leaves me with a split, which um, I am going to draw three. If I go to the second ball, and see, there's the strategy in, in bowling where if you have a split in the frame before, you're going to count, you're going to add 10 to that score plus the first ball. So you want that first ball to be maximized. So in that case, I would want to go ahead and knock that nine out. That would give me a seven this frame, which would add to the previous frame if I had had a split on that frame. This is the first frame, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because I want to go for the other. And the problem I'd have is if I discarded all these right now, I'd lose the nine and would not have even a chance of getting that nine unless I was able to add it to something. So I think I'm going to take the nine out. And the good thing is that goes ahead and lets me draw before I decided I'm done. So I drew a three, and so see, I could have done the, the nine and four, which is not an option. So basically now all I have, the only choice is I need a six, and I need a four, and there's nothing I can do there. So now it's time to go to the next ball. So I'm these down. All right, and so I'm still below five, so I can draw, I can draw one for each of them, because I've still got one left. So what I need is the six and the four, without looking, I don't know how many Tokens are left. I think there's four left in here. Let's see what we got. Okay, there's the four. That's going to help me. The one. Not going to help me. Yeah, I can feel that there's two in here, and I don't know which is which, so we'll see what we got here. Oh, got the six. Yay. All right, so simple enough. So we scored seven on the first ball. We'll take the six. Here, drop it down. And knock off these, these two, and we got that we ended up getting the spare. This is the four. Brings it down. So we end up wiping all of them off. So that'll be the first frame. We we did a six four. Uh, we didn't uh, six six four spare. So the next next frame you'd set up the same way. Take all of these, just shove them back into the into the draw cup, and then you would you know reset the pins, reset the balls, and 
do 10 frames and uh, get your highest score. And it's actually, you know, it feels like bowling. And it's a great educational uh, game. If you're, you know, homeschoolers or something like that, you could you know, use this for math skills or logic skills or whatever. It's, uh, it's an amazing game, whether you play with the cards or you play with this uh, conversion. It's, uh, it's something pretty neat. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, have fun.